Hi, I'm Peter Birch, and as you know, I love pythons. And in fact, Antarija are my favorite. So we're gonna take a closer look at those guys today and check out some of the selective processes we go through picking out some awesome critters. You're watching Critter Cam. As I've said before, my dream or my love for Antaresia started about 20 odd years ago with this guy right here. This is my friend Spot. He started the passion and the love that I have for these beautiful small pythons. And in fact, if we look closely enough at old Spot here, he does actually show some really interesting traits. He has these weird sort of linear markings down his back. Now just by noticing something that was so minute, I was able to manipulate this over a series of different generations to produce some outstanding animals with almost full stripes down their back. So we're going to take a closer look at some of the babies from Spot. From looking at the potential that Spot had, I could see that we could probably get something out of this. Now luckily enough, this is the first generation pair that came from Spot. So these are actually the children, brother and sister. They do show quite a large potential for the stripe gene. And as you can see, one is a little bit more than the other. The male here shows more predominantly the stripe than the female. So what do we go, or how do we go from here? We breed these guys together and see what the next generation holds for us. And in fact, we can also have a look at that. So let's check those ones out as well. Now we're going to take a look at the F2 generation, which basically means these are the children from the children of Spot. A little bit confusing, keep up with me. Now, the second generation started to prove that the line started to become more and more dominant. And that trait is just absolutely amazing. That's what I'm looking for, that nice stripe. Now if we have a look at the male, you can see that the contrast is a little bit different. So the darkness is really bright, leaving the background colours really pale. Now, if you think the pink stripe comes with it, unfortunately it doesn't. That helps me to determine which one's the male and female when I put them in for their pairing. And if I need to rotate that male, I can see him straight away, pull him out and rotate him without upsetting the girl way too much. But look at those stripes starting to come together. Then we put these guys together and produce the next generation, which is called the F3s. We're going to take a look at those guys too. Now we're moving on to the F3 generation. Now, the most impressive thing I think about each generation, it takes 18 months for each generation to grow to sexual maturity and they can be a little bit snappy. But look at this gorgeous girl with this beautiful line down her back. This is what we're aiming for. This is what I want to achieve. And this year, I'm pretty sure I achieved it. We're gonna check out the next generation, which are the F4s. Some very impressive babies. This girl's having a good munch. Could be a little bit difficult. The fourth generation animals also show the stripe, but still we're not getting exactly what I want. One could lose hope right about here, throw in the towel and move on to another project. But persistence with a project is the key. And the rewards will come. And in fact, the fourth generation was cool. The fifth generation is going to blow your mind. Let's check those guys out. I did promise the fifth generation is going to blow your mind. Hopefully I've kept the promise. Here's one of the little fellas right here. Look at that stripe. There's still a couple of little breaks in that banding down the back there, but don't worry, there's some other ones here that will absolutely blow you away. Look at that beautiful little critter. No breaks in the line. The line starts there and works its way down the back. I think the results from this project are going nicely. In fact, I can't wait for this season's babies. I think they're going to be crackers. Let's go and check out another project I'm working on. The next project I was dying to get my hands on when it first came out was the Platinum Maculosa. And in fact, these are some of the initial animals I got from that program. And as you can see, there's really not too much to these animals. They're a little bit paler, but they do have this thin dorsal line, which I thought was very attractive. And I thought through selective breeding, I could make that dorsal line go from head to tail, and maybe have a few blotches down the side. I was never aware of what was going to happen when I started producing some absolutely weird looking critters. We're gonna check them out as well. 
Now, unbeknown to me when I started breeding these platinums, not all the babies came out looking like the parents. And in fact, this one here had this broken up blotching, really reduced in patterning, making it look like some of the other locality max that are out there. But also some in the clutch look like this. Very different indeed. Almost calico in color. The yellow pigmentation breaks up and floats all over the animal, even up over the top. But the actual blotches themselves, the color, the dark pigmentation is shattered. And it looks like there's yellow hues trying to bleed through. And I started to think to myself, I wonder where this is going. I wonder if we can outcross this or even continue line breeding, what it's going to produce you're going to see some more of these projects. Now when we're doing line breeding, it's very important that we can continually reproduce what we're working with. That shows that there's somewhere along the line, there's some genetic traits, traits that are able to be passed on from generation to generation. And as you can see, this animal here carries those traits and express them a little bit better than the last lot. Making the blotches even lighter again with a lot more yellow, but one of the things I did notice about these particular animals is that they continually have these beautiful white bellies and almost these silvery blue eyes. Beautiful critters in their own right. For me as a snake breeder, one of the most fascinating things about this particular gene or this group that I'm working with is the clutch diversity. Look at the different colours that we have just within the same clutch. It was absolutely mind-boggling to think that these are all coming from the same pairings. So what happens when we start doing more selective breeding, picking out the best animals from the best animals and putting them together? Well, only time will tell. This season I produce some really cool animals and unfortunately every now and then you produce an absolute freak of nature. But like I said before, they all have this beautiful white belly and those bluish eyes. I think that's an indicator for this particular gene. Look at them, living jewels. Now when you're line breeding, occasionally you get something that just blows you out of the water. And this was it. This is a platinum. An absolutely beautiful, gorgeous animal. Showing hardly any blotching at all. And in fact, it's almost a patternless animal. But still having the same traits. The white belly and the bluish eyes. I can't wait to produce a lot more of these cool critters. You want to see some babies? Check it out. Here's some of the awesome little platinum babies we've produced this season, showing very significant breaking up of those large blotches. And even at this young age, you can already see the big blotches starting to fragment with the yellow hues coming through. These are going to be absolutely smashing little critters. Here's another weird little animal that came out of this season's breeding. And I think he's very gorgeous, very different to all the others. He has these large, dark blotches. I can't wait to see what these guys are going to look like when they're full grown. I've hoped you enjoyed today's show about selective breeding, about a few of my projects. Here is another one, Albino Max. I can't wait to put these across a few of the different things I'm working with and produce some more spectacular animals. Don't be afraid to follow your dreams and the path to success is very long indeed. Make sure you hit me up on Facebook and Twitter. You've been watching Critter Cam.